Hello, you might not be able to see me very clearly. It's power cut time. So what is the number one thing you want to power during a power cut blackout scenario? What are you gonna do if there's a power cut? If you experience a blackout and there's a power outage, what's your plan? Do you have an emergency plan? Or do you need me to help and suggest a few things that could help with your emergency power plan? Today, to do that, we're gonna look at the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus it's an affordable, it's an easily manageable portable power station that can keep all your devices going in case of an emergency. This time of the year, as we head into the stormy season, that's when we see the most power cuts across the UK. Trees are falling down, they're knocking power lines, and you could just be out for a few minutes, you could be out for a few hours. Either way, I wanna demonstrate the reality of what something like this could do for you in that sort of situation. If you like content that is focused on sustainability, independence, self-reliance, also content designed to save you money, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future videos. It's the fridge freezer, right? I think it's the same for all of us. So we're testing the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, which you can see very poorly in this light. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel for lots of updates on portable power stations and stuff. I've done loads in the past as my regular viewers will know. Anyway, how much power? Oh, okay, clearly the uh, compressor has decided that the fridge freezer is cool enough. So it's not currently drawing any power. I wanted to demonstrate how long this portable, really manageable unit could survive during a blackout scenario. Let me see if I turn down the uh, temperature in the fridge freezer, I can maybe force it to turn on. If you've been considering something like this for a while, this is probably a good time to make the jump. These are really popular and in demand during summertime for camping, and the prices do go right up due to the supply and demand. Right now, the demand is low and it's also Black Friday. Down in the description, you'll find my discount code, which should give you 8% off. So you can pick one of these EcoFlow units up for just about 500 pounds at the moment. And you'd be surprised at what this can actually power. A kettle's pretty hard going. All right, I just quickly fudged the settings on the fridge freezer and put it into like maximum frost mode. So I don't know if you can see in the reflections there, it's currently showing 60 watts and that's running pretty hard at this uh, flat out capacity. My fridge is gonna last 11 hours on this uh, little beauty. And as you can see, it's already settling down. I tried to drive this hard, but here we go. Now it's that. It's gonna give us 13 hours now, 14 hours. And once it gets to the desired temperature, then the compressor in the fridge freezer is actually gonna switch off and it's gonna last a lot longer. 16 hours, 17 hours. Yeah, it's gonna last 18 hours. Basically, what I did wanna show you with this EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus, it's a really portable, easy unit that if you're just wanting to power a big fridge freezer, then you will get 24 hours out of it, no problem at all. During a blackout scenario, what else is important to British people? Well, it's something that's related to the fridge. We'd, we'd have to just uh, get a little bit of milk out, wouldn't we? And we would have to use the kettle. If you've got a kettle that is two kilowatts or lower, then you will be happily making your cups of tea with your EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. So I just wanna check the inrush current. It's good to try some of the power tools on these devices, and because sometimes the motors, the initial startup, that can be the downfall of some of these portable power stations. So let's give that a good test. I've shown this trusty angle grinder on the channel many times before. How much power do you think it consumes? So a lot less than you probably thought. You see it initially spikes at about 600 watts on the display, but then it just settles down to three to 500 watts, depending on what kind of disc and what I'm cutting through. I've rigged up a sustained load, so I've set it at 400 watts. So at 400 watts, no problem at all, no fan noise. Now I've bumped that to 800 watts, no issues at all. Now we're at 1200 watts, absolutely no issues. Now the fans have kicked in. I've just asked it to 
deliver 1600 watts. I'm not sure if you can pick up the fan noise. Now on the previous Delta, it had two fans on the side and I hear that they were a bit noisier and this one's a lot quieter. But yeah, 1600 watts, no issue. Now this should push it past the, its limit. I'm asking for 2200 watts sustained. So this should trip out. Wow, it is delivering that. It's sustaining it. In reality, it shouldn't go past 1800 watts with this inverter. No issues at all. Wow, that is very impressive indeed. Now you can go and read the spec sheet and see the numbers on the page, but let me demonstrate what can this actually do. Test number one, charging the phone, charging torches. We're powered up, we're turning on the USB sockets and we're currently outputting 36 watts into those three lights, torches, flashlights, little lantern and to charge up the phone for emergency contact. But this can do so much more. So I've tested loads of portable power stations now from the likes of Blue Eti, Fossibot, Afri, All Powers and more of them. But EcoFlow sets itself apart in a few distinct ways. Number one is the app. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but you can see that it is head and shoulders above the competition. Bluetti, two plug sockets. Fossibot, three plug sockets. Afari, three plug sockets. EcoFlow, four plug sockets and USB-C that can give out 140 watts so you can easily charge your MacBook and other devices, high power devices on USB-C. Something else that I find mildly irritating is these flaps. They are just so annoying and they always flap the wrong way and you can't see what you're doing and you're fiddling around. That's why on this Fossibot unit this summer I just ripped those flaps off. Yeah, they're gone now. And they will not be making a return, but let me show you what EcoFlow does to deal with that situation. This is a great design touch that not only does it flip down, which is so much easier for access, but also you can slide it in and out of the way. That little bit of industrial design is so much neater and so much easier than the competition. Pop it back out and close it up. This is another big win for EcoFlow. 500 watt solar input, 500 watt solar input. The all powers one was also 500 watt solar input. And for these size units, that seems to be a bit standard. EcoFlow has a 500 watt solar input, but it has two ports. So you can put 1000 watts of solar input into this through the two connectors. There's frost on the ground, but the sun is shining despite the very dirty panels with leaves and debris and stuff on there. So let me give you a chance to see. Actually, the sun is currently southwest, almost perfectly southwest. It's about 2 p.m. at the end of November, and these solar panels face, face southeast. So not really a great way to test it. But anyway, I've got two of the 500 watt panels coming in through XT60 adapters. And you can see at the moment, it's inputting a solid 250 watts. So a quarter of the input that this unit can take. So even in this freezing cold weather, charging at 250 watts, tells me we're gonna go from 92% to completely fully charged in 23 minutes. And this sun has been completely clear all day long. Providing you have enough panel surface area like I do here, no problem at all keeping this fully charged during the winter months, as long as that cloud stays away. That's your only problem. Expandable battery port as well. There's no opportunity on the Blue Eti, the Fossibot, the All Powers to expand the battery storage. That is EcoFlow are leading the way on that. And then we have some other DC barrel jack outputs and we have your car 12 volt, you know, cigarette lighter style socket available as well. So it's just 12 kilos. So even if you're a weakling like me, it's very manageable. How many reps can we do with this thing? It's even manageable. You can 
You can carry it around with one hand, even if you're weak like I am. Very good sturdy handles. And it looks great in this finish as well, doesn't it? Doesn't look quite as commercial and industrial as some of the competitors. If aesthetics are your thing, then you can tell me in the comments whether this is good, bad or ugly. It has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and it has an incredible screen on it as well. Extremely bright and clear and you probably can't see that in the reflections. Perhaps you can see that okay. So it's just a very clear bright display and you can even mimic this display in the themes in the app to make it look the same. We've popped in the AC charging cable which is just a standard three pin kettle lead that you'll be very familiar with and we've set the app for optimized battery charging. The unit will be charged at the speed that is optimized for battery health which is set in the app at 500 watts you can see we are on the money. If we up that slider to 600 watts, once again it's there. So it's easy for us to charge and easy for us to take control of that. We can set in the app charge and discharge limits. So we could keep it so that it doesn't discharge below 10% and it doesn't charge over 90% in an attempt to extend its life. We know from testing and from real world usage that actually the LFP cells that they're using in these portable power stations are very resilient and even charge to 100%. As long as they're not left at 100% for months on end, then they, they experience very little degradation. Perhaps clearer for you to see on the app, we're currently getting 100 watts from the DC input. So that would be if you plug this in to charge in your vehicle, 500 watts from an AC mains plug. So we're getting a combined input of 600 watts. And it's telling me at that charge rate, it will take one hour and 37 minutes to fully charge from 32%. This can be used with storm guard, which will give you an alert if there's an incoming storm and remind you to charge up your portable power station ahead of time. You can schedule charging so that this charges on cheaper tariff rates. You can also use this as a UPS. So if you've got some sensitive electronic equipment that you want to protect from grid connect instability, like computers um, and things like that, then of course this is the device to go to. So now there's a symbol on the display telling me that the fans have turned on, but they are so whisper quiet at this power input level that it's barely audible. But I can now feel at the back of the unit is clearly where it has the exhaust port. It's bringing cool air in from the front and exhausting the warm air out of the back. I can feel it is slightly warmer than the ambient air. So I wanna know from you in the comments, what is the most important thing that you want to keep running? Is it internet router? Is it phones, tablets? Are you trying to entertain your children? Are you trying to use the microwave to cook a meal? Or is it as simple as trying to keep warm? Electric heated blanket. This could power an electric heated blanket for days, no problem at all. So what do you think of the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus? Is this something on your Christmas wish list? Do you already have a portable power station? Whoa, is it an EcoFlow one? Um, I'm extremely impressed with the app. I've been more familiar with the app from the EcoFlow stream series and the functionality on that. I'm impressed by how much the app can do with these portable power stations as well. What's the most important thing to you when considering a portable power station? What would you like to see me test in the future? In the few weeks that I've had this, this has quickly become the go-to number one portable power station. It is just right in that sweet spot of being manageable. Even the kids can lug it around. It's something that's easy to drag out to the car, vacuum the car even mow the lawn, it's easier than messing around with extension leads and all that sort of jazz. Any smaller than this, and it's not really man enough for actual appliances. Those smaller ones are fine for laptops and phones. This one, you can comfortably power almost anything. And perhaps for some of you, it may be surprising. This has no issue with the toaster, resistive heating, no problem at all. The microwave, no issue at all. Definitely something that has to be said about those big old Afri power stations that I've got. They are a beast to lug around at 40 kilos, not for the faint of heart. Whereas this thing, just over 10 kilos, you don't even think about it. I've got it here on one knee, no issue at all. 
I wish it was summer and I could more thoroughly test the solar capabilities of it but I think we'll probably revisit that next summer because I'm sure this will be the power station that we will take camping as we do every year when we go camping and we give them a full and proper road test. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that there's an incredible deal on at the moment and my discount code is down below in the description. Do you think that 500 pounds is expensive? for something that you're using for occasional use or do you think actually for the peace of mind something like this offers in a blackout power cut situation do you think that 500 quid is money well spent in that sort of scenario let me know what you think down in the comments like subscribe all the other things thank you for watching and hopefully you will join me in a future video goodbye